Good evening, and welcome to the Terrapin News Network. It's April 1st, and I'm Salman Cosby. Tonight, we're covering a special report on threats to Alaskan giant kelp ecosystems. These kelp ecosystems are a vital part of the environment today. They serve as a source of shelter and food for numerous marine mammals. However, pollution and presence of other mammals are proving to be a growing threat to their presence. To keep those ecosystems sustainable, it's important to highlight and address challenges we face today. That's why tonight we've invited a special guest, Dr. Nellie Crowd from Alaska University. She's here to present on the kelp forest ecosystem and to promote the changes we need today. Dr. Nelly Krog is a private researcher on these kelp forests, has a PhD in kelp, and is the author of the recent book, Why You Should Care About Kelp. That's care with a K. Now, I believe we do have Dr. Nelly Krog in the office. Uh, Dr. Nelly Krog, are you there? Hi, thanks for having me tonight to talk about kelp forests. I, I love kelp forests. They're really awesome, and they are threatened, and we need to be aware of this danger because they're a highly productive ecosystem. Uh, marine, they're a marine ecosystem that are similar to terrestrial forests in that they have a well-lit canopy, a dimly lit middle layer, and a dark forest floor. There are many uh, macroinvertebrates, marine mammals, and fish that all live within these layers. And there's even birds that depend on the macroinvertebrate content of this, e of this ecosystem to survive. Um, these forests are restricted to the rocky shorelines close to the coast in cold waters where light can penetrate the shallow water so that they can photosynthesize. The energy that they get from photosynthesis, they actually store in the cell wall in algin, which is a compound that's heavily used in the cosmetic and food industries and therefore there's a large market for harvesting these kelp forests, which is a large source of the uh, decrease in the population, um, number of populations and population sizes actually of these ecosystems. Kelps have fronds that attach to a rocky substrate. That's why they're on rocky coasts. But these fronds, they may look like roots, but they aren't roots. They don't actually have any function in nutrient uptake. They actually just hold, hold the kelp down onto the rocky substrate and then a stipe uh, come, grows out from that frond up towards the water's surface. There are things called floats, which are basically gas chambers that allow the, that help the stipe grow towards the water surface so that the blades of the plant can more easily photosynthesize. Another main threat to these ecosystems, other than over-harvesting, but for the food and cosmetic industries, is overgrazing by sea urchins. Sea urchin populations are actually controlled by sea otters, and sea otter populations are often diminished by human impact and human action. So when we diminish these populations of sea otters, we're ultimately negatively impacting these kelp forest ecosystems. All right, back to you. Fascinating, fascinating. Thank you, Dr. Cobb. So obviously our concerns are focusing on the threats tonight. It seems that in the past that forests used to be threatened by commercial farming after World War I. However, after that time period passed, pollution predators came to pose new threats. So we have a new uh, guest from Italy, Dr. Giovanni, that's going to present on the segment. Dr. Giovanni, can you please uh, introduce yourself? Yes, yes. My name is Dr. Giovanni. I am from Città di Vinici. My English is not very good, so I, I look up my phone. Today we are here at Lake Kelpi. It looks exactly like Lake Artemisia and College Park, but I trust you it is not. So we talk about threats to kelp forests, no? The biggest threat to the ecosystem is the sea urchins. This organism can eat kelp when others are not around, but in the presence of predators, it hides in crevices and eats the plant remains. Loss of sea otters, therefore, can have large impact on our ecosystem. Deforestation and maintenance is important to consider. Pollution is another key factor, no? Sewage industrial disposal and runoff contribute to degradation. Sedimentation can bury new plant shoots as well. It's also important to note that toxic waters and sediment are responsible for reduced growth rate and reproductive success. Overall, it's important that we control the number of sea regions by ensuring a stable ecosystem for sea otters and that we must control the amount of pollution in our environment today. That goes for industrial companies, addressing wasteful practices, and the way we deal with our own waste. As you can see here, we have kelp at the Lake Kelpie. Sea urchin, these things we have to be careful of. Careful, it's a little prickly, don't want to touch it. 
as you can see here i draw i draw paper uh otter very important sea urchin not very you know must take care of the otter and uh be careful of the pollution we do not want you to lake help uh i am dr giovanni back to you at tnn i want to thank dr crack and giovanni for coming on the show tonight and enlightening us on kelp ecosystems in alaska although there are threats present today Conservation efforts are being made by the World Wildlife Foundation and the National Ocean and Atmospheric Association. For more information on these ecosystems, please visit noaa.gov or worldwildlife.org. That's all we have for this new segment. I'm Salman Cosme, and have a nice night.